Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast, where we shine a light on the significant impact small and medium-sized enterprises have on Canada's economy. This is your host, SK. These businesses are not just crucial for economic growth, but also for fostering innovation and community spirit across the nation. In each episode, we focus on a vital aspect of your communities emphasizing the importance of supporting local businesses for a thriving and resilient society. Today, we are diving into the evolving landscape of digital advertising and the innovative approaches businesses can adopt in the age of AI and beyond cookies. Joining us today is George Rosen, a visionary in the digital advertising space, serving as the president of Hotspex Media and co-founder and president of Retical AI. Under his leadership, Hotspex Media has been recognized as a top growth company by Deloitte in 2022 and 2023 and named one of Adage's best places to work in 2023. Josh has played a pivotal role in the development of Radical AI, garnering industry acclaim for its innovative approach to media planning and buying. His achievements include being named an EY Entrepreneur of the Year nominee and Adage Top 40. In addition to his philanthropic work with the UNH Impact Collective, above all, Josh prides himself on his family, his greatest accomplishment. Join us as we delve into Josh's journey, the challenges and opportunities in digital advertising, and the future of brand differentiation. Uh, good afternoon, Josh. Welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. How are you today? I'm great. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's uh, truly an honor to have you with us today. Now, Josh, like, let's start talking about your journey, you know, like your journey in transforming digital advertising through hot specs media and radical AI, coupled with your recognition in the industry and your commitment to the family is profoundly, you know, inspiring. Uh, we are excited to explore your insights and experiences. And everyone knows, like, you know, the path to success is often a story of personal growth, resilience and continuous learning. Understanding the journey of successful entrepreneurs or business owners behind, like, you know, for their accomplishments can offer valuable lessons and inspiration not only for everyone, but for me as well. So could you share with us the story of your professional journey that led to your current roles at Hotspec Media and Radical AI? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I I think with most entrepreneurs, um, co-founders of companies, usually it comes from starting from a place of thinking that they could do better, whether it's a service or product innovation. It's usually, hey, I have the abilities to make this better. I see a better path. I, I was the same way. Uh, I grew up in the ad agency space. I think I was an okay employee, but I always had a little bit of a chip on my shoulder and felt that I could do something better, differently, be a different manager, leader than what I had been exposed to. And I had some really great mentors throughout my life, <clears throat> both on a family side as well on a professional side. That's very important, right? Yeah, it's it's very important. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of them don't even know how impactful and meaningful right the experience and the way they conducted themselves uh, throughout my life, my developmental years, as if I've stopped developing, I'm always, we're always learning they play, and evolving. Like, you know, they play a very important role. Like uh, every, I think every entrepreneur should have one mentor, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I think it's very interesting because I look at my son uh, as an example, all, all three of my kids, but in particular, this the story, this anecdote around my son he recently won a leadership award for his class. Wow. And yeah. We're, Which grade is he in? He's in grade three. Oh, really? Uh, so we were really, really excited about that. And obviously it was, it was amazing because, you know, you send your kids out into the world and they have these little lives, these little personalities, right. and you don't, uh, you don't really okay. know exactly <laughs> what they're doing, okay. what what they're saying, and okay. you get a little bit of input from them at the, at the end of the day. And uh, actually he might be in grade four. I think he's in grade four. Okay, grade <laughs> no. four okay. Yeah. And, you know, he, he kind of cites that he learned from me. He okay. learns, we spend a lot of time together. And that goes back to what I was saying. You don't, people don't really understand the impact that just being in the same room, the way that you conduct yourself, watching how someone interacts has on 
how you're, what you're going to pick up and take away and then apply that later in life. So I was exposed to a lot of dynamic personalities, a lot of people that kind of gave me this courage and this ability to go out there and go on this journey on my own because I have this mentality, this belief in me that is, why not me? Right, right. And what was the feeling like, you know, when you were nominated for the EY, like Ernest and Young Entrepreneur of the Year? Yeah. It was, it's surreal. Um, I ha I'm blessed with unbelievable co-founders and we each have this persona within the business. And I s sometimes volunteer for it, sometimes get by default thrust into these positions where I'm the, the talking head of the organization. And for me, I always want to note that it's, it's not, it's not a me thing. It's not just me. I'm I'm one person. I'm a cog in the wheel. There's a team of unbelievable people behind me. The co-founders that have are there in the trenches with me every single day. That early mornings, late nights, weekends, they're doing their thing, putting in their work, but also supporting each other. So it really was a culmination of our combined efforts, and to be sharing stage with other CEOs and founders. It, it it's it's surreal right yeah thanks for sharing those insights like reflecting on your career so far like what have been some of the most valuable lessons you have learned about innovation leadership and making an impact in the digital advertising space um so from an innovation perspective i think a lot of that why not why not us right don't think that you're too small you're not in the right country you have no business being in this space if you think you have a good enough idea, try it, right? Talk to people, share it with your network. Ask for help. Ask you know? for help is a huge thing. Right. You know, you don't know what you don't know sometimes. And you'd be surprised of what would come back to you and sort of how quickly things can start developing. From a leadership perspective, same thing. Ask for help, right? Go to people that, that you trust that have been leaders, mentors to you, ask them for their experience, for their input, and then critically apply it, right? I think it's very important that you mean what you say and say what you mean and that you show up, that you have the, those actions uh, and that you carry that responsibility uh, with a tremendous burden for, for your team and for yourself. Right. I had many discussions with many successful entrepreneurs and also aspiring entrepreneurs. Like the one thing most of them suggest is ask for help. A lot yeah. of people like, you know, they don't realize like when they ask, uh, like help in any way, like, you know, about expertise, like asking the, for the opinions or something, it will help you in a great way. Josh, you know, like after listening to your journey and so far, like uh, it's truly a testament to uh, like, you know, the impact of determination, strategic vision and the drive to innovate uh, within a rapidly evolving industry. Your experiences offer a rich source of inspiration and guidance for, for our listeners like small business owners. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Yeah. Now let's talk about the shift in digital advertising like post cookie era. Like digital advertising industry is undergoing significant changes, especially with the deprecation of cookies. Mm -hmm. Josh, can you share your perspective on how the loss of cookies is affecting the advertising and opportunities it presents for uh, different brands? I think digital is not unique to any other industry in that there's, there's cycles of whatever was old is new again. So this reliance on contextual, on awareness-driven upper funnel activity, um, first-party data, all this is coming much more into the forefront again as the deprecation of the cookie is finally happening. Right. And I think what's really exciting about the industry right now is that we had this warning from the powers that be, that the cookie was coming away. And it forced people like myself to start developing solutions around it. It gave us a couple years runway or head start to start building what I call proofs of value. The concepts are there across digital. We all know how the ecosystem works. Um, there's been a ton of consolidation in the space as well. So you have your really core players and you understand who is who is real and who's not and what works and what doesn't work. And now you're starting to see 
the next iteration of products coming out that are have been proven over the last couple of years as everybody has been forced to adapt and innovate in this new space as the cookie has started to go away, knowing that they're going to have greater reliance on other tactics and other data points. Okay. And how does theoretical AI navigate this new landscape and what advantages does it offer in contextual ad targeting? Thank you for the uh, for the plug there. So the product that we developed, which really was accidentally on purpose, uh, we wanted to go into this foray of contextual enriched or supercharged with Reticle AI almost a year and a half before Google announced that they were starting to sunset the cookie. So we were exceptionally well prepared. And our lens on this is looking at contextual advertising and overall brand strategy through the lens of emotion. So it's a completely different perspective than other things that are going out. I know you're probably thinking to yourself, you're like, well, we've had sentiment for a long time, which is true. But we could be having a very positive conversation about a negative topic or vice versa. And with that, you lose a little bit of that contextual contextuality of what the sentiment is looking for. So our technology is able to delve a little bit deeper, give brands an opportunity to show up in what we call the brand right space and help advertisers really align with the content that is going to be most impactful for their business. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Josh, for shedding light on the pivotal shift in digital advertising. Like, you know, your approach offers a fresh perspective on connecting with audiences in a more meaningful way. Listeners, as we dived into the complexities and opportunities presented by the deprecation of cookies in digital advertising, it's a pivotal moment for us to reflect on the essence of marketing. Josh Insights remind us that this change isn't just a challenge. It's an invitation to return to the roots of branding, to connect with our audiences on a more genuine and empathetic level. Let's view this as an opportunity to innovate our marketing strategies, focusing on building authentic relationship with our own customers. The evolving digital landscape is pushing us towards more meaningful interactions and it's up to us to embrace this shift with creativity and open-mindedness. Now, like, you know, let's talk about the brand differentiation in the age of uh, generative AI, like Mm -hmm. artificial, everyone knows like artificial intelligence is reshaping how brands like, you know, interact with their audiences. Making brand differentiation is more crucial than ever. Like how should brands leverage AI to stand out in a crowded market? Like according to your experience with Hotspix Media Mm -hmm. and uh, Radical AI. Well, I think we're still learning. I think we're very much in the learning phase. Uh, it's an exciting time. There's a ton of amazing technology out there. I just saw the demo of the, uh, what's it called? Sora uh, yeah. prompt. Yeah. It's, it's brilliant. Um, I think it's about finding a balance right. overall, right? We need to find the balance of how we're going to leverage AI to do certain things and what we still need human beings right. to have some oversight and extract some insights and be able to provide that to other human beings. As far as what AI can do, it's really about taking the mundane and being able to churn that out in a much more efficient manner and give us the opportunity to input greater insights and output more possibilities than we'd ever been able to before and still leverage that computing power to then make more rapid decisioning but I think we're just at the the precipice of what this is going to look like, and no one really has it figured out. I think there's tons of room for experimentation. I think there's tons of room for optimization. I think what we're really going to see the proof of the power of AI is in the application layer, which is yet to really be unfolded. Uh, do, like, did you, do you want to share any specific tools that uh, you are impressed with or you think like uh, it's the best AI tool till now, like till today that you want to share with us? Um, like I said, I think Sora is like really, really I interesting and, and dynamic. <laughs> right. Um, my own little dabbling. I mean, I have bias. I think radical AI is the greatest use of AI technology. Right. Uh, my own little dabbling with various products. There's, they're great. They do a, a huge amount of, you know, computing and workload that we wouldn't be able to do. 
And then there's little nuanced things that are frustrating with what you get it to do that it kind of forgets, you know, you can't really say, hey, design this logo for me. Okay, keep that red and white piece, but change this green piece to blue without it redoing a whole nother logo for you. Right. And that's that's frustrating and that's an area of opportunity. But the rate of which it's developing, it's going to get there. Yeah, definitely it's going to get there. If not, like I have seen a lot of the different AI services available. Uh, they're doing uh, from starting, if you're asking any question to make a sm smaller change, but it's coming out with the, uh, the whole thing, you know? Exactly. Like, yeah. So thank you for sharing those insights. Now coming back to the brand differentiation topic, like can you provide an example uh, of how emotion-driven ad placement had successfully enhanced brand differentiation? Well, I think it goes back to the, and I love this question, by the way, and I think it goes back to why advertising existed in the first place. We all have a connection with something. Every, you know, whether it's your favorite car that you had as a poster on your wall, your favorite sports team, your favorite beverage, band, shoe, whatever it is, we have that preference because it elicits and invokes an emotional response in us. Right. And advertising was designed to do that, was to make you feel that you were missing out by not consuming this product. Right. And as we got more analytical, we kind of lost our way in that and we started to rely more on the data that was coming to us. And it w really was, uh, you know, an old adage, but like paralysis through analysis. And I think we're starting to go back to the top of this conversation. What's old is new again. Right. We're starting to come back to the, the good old days, if you will, of advertising where, you know, building that brand awareness, building your audience, really connecting at an emotional level, and then looking at new unique metrics and data points because the cookie's going away, we are forced to look at these things, is helping us build greater connections and forcing greater storytelling and greater creativity as, you know, we're saturated with advertising. People are time starved. We're always scrolling and looking to skip and move faster. So the, the attention economy is something that's growing and is making us do better do better ads, make better ads. And it's going very rapidly, right? Exceptionally rapidly, right. yeah. Uh, Josh, your insights into leveraging AI for brand differentiation are invaluable. Like, you know, it's clear that understanding and connecting with customer emotions is key to standing out. To all our insightful listeners, today's discussion with Josh eliminates the critical role of a brand differentiation in an increasingly crowded digital marketplace. In an era dominated by AI and technological advancement, distinguishing your brand's goals beyond the products or services you offer. It's about the story you tell and the emotional connections you forge. As we ponder on Josh's experiences and strategies, let's challenge our own self to think beyond conventional marketing tactics. How can we leverage AI not just for efficiency, but to enhance our own storytelling? to resonate deeply with our audiences and to create a brand identity that's both memorable and impactful. Remember, the future of branding is not just in the technology we use, but in the humanity we bring to our own brands. Now, Josh, like, let's talk about measuring marketing campaign success. Like, you know, in rapidly evolving digital landscape, traditional metrics for measuring uh, marketing success are being re-evaluated. Beyond sales, like, what metrics do you believe are essential for brands to focus on when assessing the effectiveness of their marketing campaigns? I think sales is always going to be part of it, number one. At the end of the day, we're all in business to generate business. Right. So how we get there, I think, is the is the critical piece. And it can no longer be a race to the bottom where we've created this commodity-driven ecosystem where lowest cost to deliver impressions wins. Because that doesn't always equate into the real world where you didn't I didn't buy because I was the cheapest, you know, impression to show up. And, and buy your product. In fact, given how many ads are we're exposed to on a regular basis, you would think that it would be the inverse, right? That the higher impression right. converts. Mm. 
which sometimes is the case, sometimes isn't Sometimes the case. it was, sometimes it doesn't. You're right. right? Yeah. But as vendors, as partners to the brands, I don't think that we should be held to that standard where there's fluctuation in a CPM or CPC. Uh, you know, click-through rate is pretty arbitrary uh, these days as far as being indicative of overall campaign performance. I think looking at unique awareness uh, plays, looking at uh, foot traffic is pretty interesting and dynamic. Uh, and, and I think overall looking at unique attention metrics are going to help us tell a better story overall uh, and help us get greater alignment, which is going to drive to better ad performance, right. better business out outcomes. Like, w w what do you suggest for the brands? Like, you know, who, who are very aggressive, for example, like if yeah. you're doing any campaign and if they're, and, and they care only about, you know, clicks and impressions. I think you're kind of making your bed there. You're, mm -hmm. you're looking, you're, you're forcing the hand. You know, one of the big topics internally for us right now is how do we ensure and avoid made for advertising websites. And I think when you have the brand coming down and forcing specific metrics, you're not helping us avoid that, right? You're not helping the industry get rid of those. Mm -hmm. It's creating a place for them, a seat at the table, because we need to have that mix of low cost, high click-through rate. Right. So I think we need to reshape, reframe what successful digital campaigns look like. And, you know, I love it. Like you put up a billboard and then it's like, yeah, roughly this many people saw it. Saw it right. And that's the metric, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> and then we wait for sales to come in right. and, and you hear if people saw the ad and and it's kind of, that that's it. Right. And then digital, we're analyzing, you know, line by line by line by line of of analytics. Right. So we need to find a way to come a little bit more back to the surface uh, and look at outcomes that that really matter and are really indicative of of business success. Right. Now, like how does Hotspec Media help clients identify and measure these key performance indicators? I mean, that's a little bit of our secret sauce. So I'm not gonna not gonna give that but, away. But I think we take a very unique uh, approach or perspective to when we onboard a, a, a new client. And we look at the business objectives, the business outcomes, the data, the re audience insights and research that are available to us. And then we look at a very rich analytics suite and how we can apply that to the campaign. Then we go into channel. Then we start looking at what channels are going to be most impactful and what we're going to be able to measure in order to get back to the business outcome that matters. We're not just coming in and being like, okay, search social video every single time, display native YouTube. Like we're really taking a pragmatic approach and trying to customize every outcome because every campaign, every brand is unique. Even if you're in the same vertical, you don't have the same share of voice, right? You don't have the same features and benefits necessarily. Right. You, you you talk about distinction a lot. You're known for different things. So you need to know what space you can play in and then be able to double down on that to drive a KPI. Right. Uh, thank you for emphasizing the importance of a broader perspective on, you know, like campaign success. It's a reminder for everyone that like, you know, true engagement goes beyond conversations. Right. Now, let's talk about like, uh, this is a very important, like, you know, we like uh, we need your advice for the new emerging digital advertisers. Mm -hmm. uh, like a lot of uh, digital advertisers face a landscape filled with both challenges and opportunities. Based on your uh, uh, extensive experience, George, like what advice would you offer to those just starting out in digital advertising? What problem are you trying to solve? Is it really a problem? Uh, is one of the biggest things that I, would, that I would ask myself. Is this something that is going to be ongoing? It's evergreen? Or is it something that is unique to us right now and will be obsolete in six months? Really try and understand who your buyer is and lead with ultimate you know, client buyer empathy, put, try and put yourself in their shoes to understand the challenges. What's keeping them up at night is a question we ask a lot internally. 
and then go from there and go with vigor, <laughs> go with confidence and, you know, with, with passion and with integrity every step of the way and good things will happen. Right. As you rightly said, like, you know, it is very important to ask and know what problem you're solving. Like, you know, back in 2013, when I was, uh, when I was attending a, a seminar in UK, one of the speakers, they said like, you know, don't like it, it was a seminar for entrepreneurs. And he said like, don't worry about making money. Don't yeah. start a business for making money. Exactly. You know? Money will come automatically just to worry about what problem you are going to solve for the people. Exactly. That's how, you know, like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So now coming back uh, to our discussion, like how important is it, uh, like, you know, is it for new advertisers to embrace AI and uh, uh, like and contextual advertising from the outset? I think you have to, right? I think to not is to immediately start from the back of the pack. I think understanding what your AI strategy is and what that means is critically important. And I think you're going to start to see a lot of industries or subsets of this industry businesses start to emerge in order to service that need right is it internal data collection is it about visualization of dashboards is it about creative and and ad uh creation is it about ad placement what what does it mean to you what does it mean to your business and i think that's everybody has has to look at that Right. Uh, thank you so much, Josh, for sharing your advice uh, for the new uh, emerging digital advertisers. Like, you know, your advice is a valuable roadmap for anyone uh, looking to make their mark in digital advertising. Now, as we wrap up our discussion, you know, like uh, I'm curious to hear your broader perspective. Like, could you share a universal piece of advice that has been crucial for your success and uh, could be applied across various aspects of a life, not limited to advertising? Wherever possible and appropriate, my signature is fortune favors the brave. And I think whether that's calling up a client, coming on a podcast, um, starting a business, take that leap. Exactly what you said. Don't do something because you're like, hey, I want to get rich from doing this or I think we can make a lot of money. Do it because you're passionate about it, because you care. And then people will sign up. People will buy. Right. And uh, also, like, uh, how can we, like any of our listeners want to get connected with your uh, um, uh, brand? Like, uh, w what's the best possible way for them to get connected with you? Yeah. So I'm on LinkedIn, Josh Rosen. Feel free to connect with me, send a note. Otherwise, we're at hotspecsmedia.com and radicalai.com. Uh, thank you so much, Josh, for being uh, like uh, with us today for the podcast. It be, it's been a pleasure hosting you today. Thank you so much for sharing your valuable insights and experiences with me and with our audience. Likewise, thank you very much for having me. I appreciate it. As we wrap up today's episode, I do like to extend my heartfelt thanks to Josh Rosen for joining us and sharing his expertise and vision for the future of digital advertising. The insights discussed today highlight the importance of adapting to changes, leveraging AI and connecting with audiences on a deeper level for brand differentiation. Today's key takeaways is the transformative power of understanding and adapting to the digital advertising landscape, especially in a post-cookie world. Josh's leadership in navigating these changes and his innovative approach with hot specs media and radical AI exemplify how brands can thrive by focusing on meaningful engagement and emotional connections. A special thank to our partners, exclusive banking partner RBC, exclusive shipping partner UPS, exclusive accounting software partner Zero, and exclusive email partner Constant Contact for their generous support. We encourage our listeners to subscribe to the Canadian SME Small Business Magazine by visiting our website canadiansme.ca for more empowering content. And to our listeners, thank you for tuning in. Let's continue to support and innovate within the small business community. Until next time, keep exploring, keep innovating and keep making a difference.